First of all, thank you all so much for helping me get to 1,000 subscribers. My original plan once I hit this milestone was to make my long-awaited video on Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. But then my genius son told me that I can't do that until I hit 2001 subscribers. So instead, I thought I'd acknowledge all of those commenters who keep telling me I don't talk enough about my own opinion. For this video, we're going to look at my five favorite films from all the ones I've covered, along with my five least favorites. Just so we're clear though, I at least appreciate even my least favorite film, or else I probably wouldn't have made a video for it. Maybe one day if I do this long enough I'll cover a movie I genuinely hate, but truth be told, whenever I learn all the ins and outs of a movie, it tends to make me like it more, not less. So let's start with my least favorites, movies I like, but which I'm not likely to watch again just for fun. Number 5 I'm glad I can get this controversial choice out of the way first, because even though Close Encounters is an incredibly well-made movie that I grew up loving and that cemented Steven Spielberg's place as one of the greats, I was really surprised by how much I didn't like it when I was working on my video review. Maybe it has something to do with me being a happily married man with a kid of my own, but I'm no longer able to relate, really, to Roy Neary, who treats his family like crap even before he gets obsessed with aliens. On top of that, the movie offers no evidence that the aliens are as benevolent as the movie clearly wants us to think they are, and for a movie about the importance of communication, it seems weird that there is so little communication actually taking place. Now, it's not my least favorite Spielberg movie. That would probably be War of the Worlds, which I discussed at length not too long ago on my website. But it still pains me to talk badly about one of my favorite directors. Spielberg is great, and I look forward to discussing some of his better sci-fi films in the future. Number 4 I wanted to love this movie so much, but it's a movie at war with itself. I respect the hell out of the filmmaking because it's pretty impressive, but a lot of the science fiction elements feel really half-hearted and contradictory, for reasons I explain in detail in my review. A few simple tweaks and a more fleshed out world outside of the rollerball arena would have gone a long way to making this one of the greatest science fiction movies of the 70s, but as it stands, it has more potential than anything else. I mean, sure, James Caan is pretty good in it, and I absolutely love John Houseman as the evil corporate warlord, but none of the other characters are particularly interesting, not even Maude Adams's. Every scene not in the arena just sucks the life out of the movie, and I'd almost rather watch a cut version that takes all that out and focuses 100% on the rollerball sequences. Of course, this movie is approximately 3,000% better than the remake, which is, without hyperbole, one of the worst big-budget movies I've ever seen. And I've seen Wing Commander. Number 3 This video review is a blast to make, but the actual subject is a really, really stupid movie. I took a little bit of flack from my older viewers about not being meaner to Jane Fonda, but that's not why I don't like Barbarella. As I mentioned in my review, its tone is all over the place, and the humor doesn't always land. But it's more frustrating than that, because you can see where the humor could work if handled a little better, if it leaned a little more into the absurdist, rude humor. If this were more like a Monty Python flick or a Farrelly Brothers-style screwball comedy, it could be great fun, but it insists on taking itself seriously at the weirdest times. I talk in my review about how it should be applauded for following its comic book source material as closely as it does, but that's actually one of the reasons I don't like it. I'd be fonder of it if it weren't afraid to be irreverent. Number 2 I have no doubt that in its day, Logan's Run was spectacular. It's one of the most fondly remembered mid-70s sci-fi classics, and I get why. That said, man, has it aged badly. The effects are embarrassing, the pacing is awful, it has one of Goldsmith's weakest scores, and as much as I love Michael York as an actor, he doesn't do much to make Logan an interesting or engaging character. It's not all his fault either, because the plot doesn't give him a lot of room to make his inevitable turn believable. I also hate the ending, which doesn't make a lot of sense or really pay off any of the central thematic conflicts. It also doesn't help that before making my video, I read the novel first which is a significantly better version of the story. The only reason this is my second least favorite and not my first, though, is a purely hormonal one. Jenny Agutter, in that translucent green dress, is one of the sexiest women ever put on film. Number 1 
This is one of the few movies I'd actually never seen before setting out to review it. I knew it had nothing on the television show and that I shouldn't try to compare them, but I was actually a little surprised by how many elements the show got from the movie. Still, the movie is just a random pastiche of scenes that don't really come together into a coherent story until the final act, which somehow, against all logic, makes a killer robot chase feel boring. You can kinda see the actors and Crichton having fun with it, but that doesn't make up for the fact that this is just a mess of a movie. Okay, so now I've said my piece about the movies I like the least, let's move on to the ones I like the most. Those of you who've followed me long enough should know by now I prefer to be positive. Picking just five favorites is surprisingly hard for me, because I make these videos because I friggin' love classic science fiction, from the silent era all the way up to 30 years ago. Truth be told, I like current science fiction too, but you know, I need a niche. Number 5 Right when I started doing this, a part of me wanted to burn through all of George Powell's filmography. I've already covered three of his movies, with a few more waiting in the wings, but my favorite would either be War of the Worlds, which I plan to get to someday, don't worry, or The Time Machine, which was only the second movie I ever covered on this channel. Though it's not a perfect movie, I really don't like the rings that talk nonsense, it's actually better constructed than H.G. Wells' novel. It's one of those rare cases where the movie's actually better than the book. I love Rod Taylor, I love Yvette Mimiu, and of course I love Scrooge McDuck, I mean Alan Young. I saw a toy machine vanish. The Morlocks are great, and the stop-motion time-lapse effects are really, I don't know, charming. I'm also surprised by how much love my video review keeps getting. I can't watch it anymore myself, I'm too embarrassed by it, but a few people have told me they subscribe to my channel after seeing it, and according to my analytics, it gets a steadier amount of views than most. Number 4 I'm a sucker for the 1930s' is monster flicks, and The Invisible Man might just be my favorite of the whole bunch, even beating out Frankenstein and Dracula. It's got a sense of fun to it that most of the others lack, but it's still terrifying in its own right to watch this man descend into megamalaniacal violence. About 90% of the credit goes to Claude Rains, of course, who absolutely steals the movie, with the other 10% going to H.G. Wells and James Whale. I also really enjoyed studying up on this one, learning about old school special effects techniques and getting back into the quirks of the old studio system that I haven't thought much about since my film school days. I was genuinely surprised to discover that before this movie, Claude Rains was something of a Hollywood joke, a man nobody thought would make it on the silver screen. That's just mind-boggling in hindsight. It's also always fun to talk about the great and ultimately tragic James Whale, but a lot of that discussion I've had to save for Frankenstein, which I promise is also coming. Number 3 How can you not love this movie? It's the best Charlton Heston sci-fi flick from the 60s and 70s, and that's saying something. But of course, it doesn't need me to defend it as everybody pretty much already knows about it. The acting, the memorable dialogue, the ape makeup, the social commentary, and the Rod Serling twist at the end all conspire to make a cultural cash cow that is still being milked today. The video review proved to be one of my most difficult, though. I had some of my worst technical issues putting it together, and I also had a really hard time getting information that wasn't already covered in the extensive behind-the-scenes documentary. A little peek behind the curtain, I don't like covering movies that have already been exhaustively covered by full-length documentaries. It's one of the main reasons I haven't gotten around to Alien, because of memory. Still, you just can't talk about sci-fi classics without talking about Planet of the Apes. Let me know in the comments if you want me to cover the sequels, because I totally will. Conquest is criminally underrated, and it's still resonant these days. Number 2 Speaking of sequels, here is one of the best ever made, which I turned into my longest video. I friggin' love Wrath of Khan. I just love it. Everything about it. The space battles, the fully realized characters, the fact that it respects the canon enough to throw half of it out the window. Ricardo bleeping Maltomon. The James Horner score, the intelligent subtext, the special effects, the resurrection of a franchise that, believe it or not, was in its death throes. I mean, come on. All due respect to my parents and teachers, but this movie practically raised me. I can't possibly gush about it enough. Number one. But one of my other true loves has always been horror. So naturally, the movie that seals the top spot has got to be a science fiction horror film. 
Enter John Carpenter's remake of The Thing from Another World, a wonderful Golden Age classic that could have easily made this list as well, alongside both versions of The Fly. John Carpenter's The Thing is a paranoid masterpiece that was underappreciated in its day, but has gone on to be a seminal classic of the genre. It also happens to hit me in all my weak spots. An ambiguous theme that can be read into in multiple ways? Check. An ambiguous plot that leaves just enough unanswered questions to make you want to theorize about it all the live long day? Check. Fantastic practical special effects without a hint of CGI? Check. Characters who feel real without being over-explained? Check. A haunting atmosphere that clings to you long after you finish the movie? Check. No shoehorned romantic subplot? Check. Amazing actors at the top of their game? Check. This is a movie I straight up obsess over, to the point that when I find other videos on YouTube talking about it, I get all defensive and jealous like they're talking about something only I should be allowed to discuss. So there you have it, my fellow Earthlings. Since this has been more opinion heavy than my usual fare, I'm sure you probably disagree with my lists. So go ahead and tell me which of my covered sci-fi classics are your most and least favorites in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, I am constitutionally obligated to say that, and thank you once again for helping me get to 1,000 subscribers. This is totally awesome. Until next time, this is The Unapologetic Geek, telling you to never be ashamed of what you love, as long as, well, you know. Outside. I hate it. Just, just, I hate just it. Just the curtain. <laughs>